Hey everyone, it's your boy Brickhouse here, and um, Disney and ESPN. Now, many have heard, speculated, known, whatever the case, how valuable ESPN is to Disney. But up until now, we really just didn't know how much. That is until, until starting this quarter. Disney's making a change in how it reports the quarterly financials. As part of a move by Bob Iger to restore creativity to the center of our business. This is from Awful Announcing. Up until now, ESPN was lumped in with all of Disney's other linear TV and streaming assets or included with other TV properties such as ABC and Disney cable channels, which really made it hard to figure out what was ESPN generating? What was their piece of the pie in the, in the bigger picture that is Disney? Well, ESPN is really its own division within Disney. And now with the change of how they're going to report the financials, it's going to provide a much clearer picture to what's actually going on. So yesterday in an SEC filing, that filing showed that the numbers at ESPN have actually been declining. And that's declining for the first nine months of fiscal 2023. The sports media giant has generated more than $12.5 billion during that time, but revenue has been dropping. In fact, uh, the first quarter this year generated $4.4 billion. Second quarter, $4.1. Third quarter, $4.06. So that revenue has been dropping. The business ended up with $1.9 billion in operating income during that time, down from roughly $2.1 billion for the same time frame in 2022. Earnings fell to $1.48 billion over those nine months as well. Now, when you make a comparison, fiscal year 2022 revenues were $17.3 billion with an operating profit of $2.7 in 2021, revenue was $16 billion with an operating profit of 2.7. So now we're looking at same time period. Revenues of $12.5 billion. With it looks like an operating profit of about 2.1. Or no, 1.9. Now, the numbers are showing just how important the Bristol-based sports entertainment arm is to Disney. Disney's entertainment division, which includes other Disney TV networks and streaming services, as well as film and TV studios generated... 39.6 billion in revenue, but only 2.1 billion in profit for fiscal year 2022. Now, a lot of that could be attributed to Disney's streaming service, D, which has been hemorrhaging money. In fact, I think the total, when you go back to the fourth quarter of 2022, is somewhere around $2 billion. I mean, that's, that's nothing to sneeze at, folks. Now, ESPN does have some of the highest carriage fees when it comes to linear television or cable television or satellite television. And that's always been a point of contention. Look what just happened with uh, Spectrum just a few weeks ago. That little kerfuffle was about carriage fees.
And those carriage fees generate about $8 billion in revenue. And when you compare that to advertising, $3.2 billion in subscription fees, $1.1 billion. That's why those fees are important to ESPN. Now, this article says that's why those fees were a major part of the Disney Charter battle last month. That's exactly right. This happens quite a bit when it comes time for carriage fees to be negotiated in a new agreement with, say, a charter or a DirecTV or a Dish Network or a Comcast. There's always a battle over those fees, and those fees keep going up and up and up and up. And it's not a secret that Disney's fees, carriage fees, are the most expensive of any other cable uh, ch set of channels, networks, whatever. Overall, the financial numbers seem positive against expectations, though there are still plenty of questions about where the business goes when it eventually launches its potentially lucrative direct-to-consumer product. I mean, that's part of the plan, is, is Bob Iger said he wants to take ESPN direct-to-consumer. He wants to put ESPN on a subscription-based streaming platform. I mean, he does have ESPN Plus now which you can get with Hulu and uh, D+. There's perhaps more durability to ESPN's top-line growth than expected. Well, as Fargo Anna Stephen Cahill said, the real test comes when ESPN launches DTC. That's direct-to-consumer. Iger and Disney have made it clear that they're on the hunt to find a strategic partner for ESPN. That's right. They're looking for somebody to share the costs. They're looking for a partner like the NBA or the NFL or the NHL or Major League Baseball to kind of help shoulder the burden, so to speak. Despite the flagging revenue numbers throughout fiscal 2023 so far, the hope is that the financials showcase just how robust the business still is in spite of changing TV habits and industry trends. So... What do you guys think? Comment down below. Share your thoughts. Share your opinions. Are you even going to get ESPN if they go direct to consumer and start their own streaming service? Do you even care? While you're at it, please take the time to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video out there with your friends and family. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my content here on YouTube. And as always, thanks for watching. And I will see you later.